Take the pictures. Take the pictures. Take the pictures. Hello, people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you here today. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In this video, I have two pastors that I want to discuss here with you. If you are patient enough, I don't know how long this video may be, but I will try as much as I can to make it short enough. Life is going. Time is going. When will you manifest? You have one life to live, and that's the life of God. You have everything, but sir, no matter what we have, a day is coming. You end up in one place, they call it coffin. They call it caskets. It has no tire. It has no horn. It has no air conditioner. That's why they will drop you. That's if they like you. But then they carry you anyhow. You are driving a Jeep now. You have a Camry. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. I just want to give you guys an update. Um, yes, I was arrested, but I was released and all the charges were dropped um, or they called it um, voided out, whatever they want to call it. Um, so if I did do something, why am I not still there? Right. Let's use logic. Let's use logic. And she's still there. Amen. So I just need y'all to get that understanding. I'm not scared of y'all and I'm not scared to be in my church. And I'm going to continue to be in my church. But one of the things that you're not going to do is come inside of my church and do what you want to do. That's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. They made a grave mistake in arresting the bishop. Um, they would have never did it to a rabbi. They would have never did it to a priest. But because of the color of my skin, they um, arrested me. Not only did they arrest me, um, but when... They put me in the police car. They injured my wrist. However, um, when they got me to the precinct, they put me in a cell. And then after um, an hour or so, the higher ups, once they found out who was there, um, came in and started to do some research or whatever they did. And um, all of the charges was dropped on me. But you don't get to arrest me for no reason. I'm going to protect my family. No one is going to come at my family and no one is going to hurt my family ever again. I have to protect my family. I have to protect my church. Yes, yeah, so people, you're welcome back again. Yeah, I decided to sh share the, this video into two. And so in this part, I just want to give you that part of um, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, you know, with his. But if you have not watched the part one, I suggest you watch the part one of this video because that will give you a perfect and a better understanding of what we started from before we came to this point. God bless you. I wish you a happy viewing. Don't forget to put down your comment in the comment section and share the link to the video. Please give us your thumbs up, like the video, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. And you know what's so crazy? You got a scratch. When I went to the um, yeah, the EMS looked at it and checked it out. She didn't have stitches. It looked like he stitches. Now everything that the Bible describes here. The Bible says, now the overseer, let's even look at Amplified Version. Now a bishop, or superintendent or overseer must give no grounds for accusation, but must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, circumspect and temperate and self-controlled, he must be sensible and well-behaved and dignified and lead an orderly, disciplined life. He must be hospitable, showing love for and being a friend to the believers, especially strangers or foreigners, and be a capable and qualified teacher. In verse 3, not giving to wine, not combative, not combative, but gentle and considerate, not quarrelsome, but forbearing and peaceable and not a lover of money, insatiable for wealth and ready to obtain it by questionable means. And this one, hey, I think we will do, uh, a, you know, 
a separate video centering on this. Now, why am I talking about Apostle John Suleiman? I'm not talking about him in bad light now, but that is the message I heard him preach. Please, you've got to hear this message. You've got to listen to Apostle Johnson Suleiman. And while I was, you know, I, I, I was actually caught by that message. And if you look at the demonstrations and remonstrations in the congregation, it shows you that that congregation has not heard something like that before. So I began to ask myself, could it be a new Apostle Johnson Suleiman or is it just a once-off thing? Now, because it is actually quite good that while we preach and speak to others, we must be also living according to what we preach, what we say. Uh, Barry White said, telling me this, telling me that, here are my baby, practice what you teach. Now, that is that was an unbeliever singing and telling you, you're telling me this, you're telling me that, but you're not practicing what you're preaching. The Lord Jesus spoke so of the Pharisees. He said to the people, whatever they tell you, do, do. Because they are sitting on the seat of Moses and the prophets. You know, they're actually telling you the truth. Only that they teach, but they don't do. Now, but that is not the standard set by the scripture. A pastor must not be controversial. A pastor must not be, must not be, uh, you know, combative. I love, I love, must give no grounds for accusation. Now, let it be that you are not the one creating the grounds for the accusation. Okay, let's watch the video. Let's watch the video now. Life is going. Time is going. When will you manifest? You have one life to live. And that's the life of God. You have everything. But sir, no matter what we have, a day is coming. You end up in one place. They call it coffin. They call it caskets. It has no tire. It has no horn. It has no air conditioner. That's when they will drop you. That's if they like you. But then they carry you anyhow. You are driving a Jeep now. You have a Camry, a Toyota, a Corolla. But one day is coming. When you enter one thing, they fix you in there. It's called coffee. It's called the casket. At that day, while everybody is doing what they are doing, you already give an account of how you have lived your life. If it was spending time doing makeup that took your attention from worship. If it was spending time on internet fraud. Coffee. Everybody will go there. Pastor will be there. Prophet will be there. Apostle will be there. Reverend will be there. Usher, protocol. Everybody will be in that coffin. Not just coffin. They will lower the person. Put him, put him, put him, put him. Put him here, he will be forgotten and never remembered. Put him here in the next six months, termites and ants would have eaten his body. At that point in the coffin, what you will be remembered for are the things you did for God in your lifetime. How you registered your name on the sands of time. How you shook hell. How many souls became saved through you. Or how many souls you discouraged from going to church. How many people you sat down fellow christian brothers you destroy them you destroy them yet you were speaking in tongues because you lie to yourself that prayer is the key prayer is not the key love is the key you lie to yourself that fasting is the key fasting is not the key fasting is a key but love is the key for by this shall all men know you are my disciples when you love one another i should come to church and the weakness of a sister or a brother when she sees me she feels strong I should not make a sister feel more weak than she already feels. When I look at a brother, I should celebrate his strength, not his weakness. There is no priest without infirmity. There is no body without a challenge. My concern, what makes me your brother, is that I celebrate your strength. I am celebrating the good parts of your life. I am not celebrating your weaknesses because I know every man is a work in progress. The Bible says in Galatians 6 verse 1, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one with the spirit of meekness, knowing that you also can be tempted. If only in this life we have hope, we have hope of all men most miserable. Some are around 2019, if only they knew that when COVID comes. Some are around 2021, this is 2022. Everybody's will. One day, one day, when it comes knocking, at the age of 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, the coffee. There are not two coffees made together. They will be separate. Everybody answer his own. Wife, all the, my love, my darling. No, answer your name. That's your girlfriend that refuses that because of that girl, you are not answering altar call. You will answer your name there. That's your boyfriend. You say you cannot pack out of his house because you have no accommodation. So you are living in the house of somebody you are not married to. You will answer your name. And God will show you what I'm, what I'm saying now. God will play it to you. There was a time I told you about the coffee, but your heart was hurting. So what I'm saying in essence is that, you see, I am not God. I don't judge people. I don't judge people. I only stand to talk about 
you know, what I feel and what I have seen in the scripture and what my conscience tells me is bad or good. So we are looking at this message. This message is perfect. This message is flawless. This message, you know, in fact, ministered to me. And I hoped it ministered to him just like I saw it minister to the congregation. Now, but the question now is, is this a new brand apostle or is this a kind of new wine in an old skin? Now, because the, the, the force of the new wine will burst the old skin and then the controversy will start all over again. Now, look at this. We read it again. Now, a bishop, superintendent or overseer must give no grounds for accusation but must be above reproach. Now, there is a difference in people accusing someone wrongly, accusing someone falsely. And that, I must say, exists here on earth. It is there every day. Somebody can rise up and, you know, to tarnish your character, to destroy you, in order to, you know, to defame you, in order to bring you down. We know that. But the Bible here is saying that we should not be the ones to give them the ground for it. We should not be the ones, you know, and it becomes more complex in today's time of social media. You know, I saw I saw one screenshot that was uh, displayed by uh, Cassie of one, you know, you know, blogger who was on a video call with a half naked man. And the person that sent it to me, sent it to me. I said, this woman may not even be aware of this. She may not even have anything at heart. But because this person has been sent in order to just remove your, your top and uh, do a video chat with him and capture the screen and we will use it. I mean, that is, that is out there. So it becomes very important that even ministers, believers, brothers and sisters, leaders in the church must be very, very careful. You, you know you know what? The Bible says uh, that th this person must give no grounds for accusation, but must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, circumspect and temperate, self-controlled. That is why there are some of us that are running from the ministerial post. Because there are some things that we, we find in our lives that probably we see need, need God to work out in us. Some of us that are still not, you know, temperate, that we are we are temperamental, we 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 don't have you know control over our uh, our uh, temperament. You know, there are so many brothers out there that yeah, they have grace. They have grace. They you know they can they can preach, they can teach. But when you say, Pastor, no, they are not accepting it because they think that they don't qualify. Because they think that there is something that God needs to take away from them. It's not the most that you become a pastor. It's not the most. Now, one other thing is that they say self-control. He must be sensible and well-behaved and dignified and lead an orderly, disciplined life. He must be hospitable, showing love for Others. Now we go to this other verse three. Not given to wine, not combative, but gentle. Some of the tapes, some of the weddings of our apostle, even recently on on pulpit. Pulpit is not a place of standing to to settle scores. It's a place you stand to bless people. It's a place you stand to give out what God has given to you. It's not a place you stand to settle matters. I know that many puppies of the apostle will come after me, even though I'm not, I'm not saying bad thing about you, apostle. I'm actually just giving everybody counsel. But if your apostle is doing that, saying that he stands on the pulpit and say, twa, twa, kill you there. Twa, twa, kill you there. I'm a generator. He, uh, he, you know, those things, those things. And not, I'm not speaking about making people to disappear now. I'm not speaking about that. But these are the ones that we even see that these ones are not even voice, but I mean, but video. You see, I'm not a lover of money. He must be peaceable. He must not be a lover of money, insatiable for wealth and ready to obtain it by questionable means. I'm not saying that, uh, uh, that I don't know any of you, any of your pastors that is insatiable for wealth and ready and willing to get it from dubious means. 
But when we begin to project false miracles, we begin to give false prophecies to frighten people, we begin to ask people to come and sow. If they don't sow, they will die. That is what the Bible is saying here. If you don't sow, there is a man from South Africa, he's a bishop too, that will tell people, if you don't, if you don't give me that money, you will die. Even the other time, he even asked people to go and get loan to come and pay tithe. Tithe of what? Go and get loan to come and pay tithe. Go and borrow money to come and pay tithe. You ask yourself, tithe of what? Why? Tithe of what to gain it? What, is, what, what will they pay tithe for? Somebody, if, if he has to go and borrow the money, it means that he doesn't have it. So that is, and he's a bishop. That is what the scripture I just read now is, is, is talking about. So, you know, I appreciate God though, for the life of the, uh, the apostle. God bless you. Thank you very much. No verse. Let me know what you think about the video in the comment section. Thank you so much. Put down your comments in the comment section. Share the link to others and remain with us. Give us your subscription if you have not subscribed with us. Uh, don't forget to activate the, the bell icon so that... Uh, the next time we upload video, you will be among those that will receive notification from Google. So when you select the bell icon, click on all, and you will be notified first by Google. So I come your way again in the next video. I remain your brother in the Lord, and from me to you, Shalom.